Lock is first off. First off, Couch Lock is a show about where you get to come on the show, sit back, kick it, get to know everybody from a personal perspective. Whether it be through food, liquor, weed, weed whatever their pleasure is. And you know, today on Couch Lock we got a good guest. You know, one of her personal friends. Yeah, and we go back so far, you know what I'm saying? I consider him um, a legend in the game, especially in Detroit hip hop, because the game has went so far left and he always kept it right. So we go back like to the lush or whatever, but we'll talk about that. And he goes by the name of Fat Five. When you fall and shit gets real, your bitch gets ill, alcohol I'm and glad drugs I'm get here. pills, addiction pills. I'm here. Somebody will want to have you here. I understand. Okay, we're anything else in the world. So let me ask you I know we go back far, we go back to the lush or whatever. But what I want to know is, how long have you been rapping? When did you first start? You know what I'm saying? And what inspired you to, you know, want to become an MC? Man, I've been rhyming since like third grade, though. Like, like for real. Like just, just rhyming. But what inspired me is the fact that my father was a male dancer. I didn't <laughs> want to be that. I didn't want to be that. I refused to be that. And like, <laughs> every everybody kind of had like big dreams of me following in those footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Like I was supposed to be the chosen one, but I, no. So I got my bars up. Right. So, did you, were you a solo at first? Or you know, how did you become, because I know you was in the group called Fat Killers. So like, upon you, you know, venturing out, writing and everything, was it collectively with them or did you start off as a solo and then meet them and form a group? I mean, it was, it was really solo um, at first, but then when I was around 15, I was in a group with Chaos from Chaos and Maestro and, and my man Love Joy and a couple other cats. We had a crew called The Foundation and um, that pretty much was the beginning moments, like being groomed, right. studio groomed, mm -hmm. knowing what an ad lib is, and like so. It I can I guess I can say it really started with a group setting. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Okay. With uh, you say you started off with Mark One and that group, uh, the Fat Killers. And King Gordy. And King oh yeah, that that was King later King on. That was like uh, we formed the Fat Killers and like. 2001, 2002. How did that come about? How did y'all just get together? Because I see you work with King Gordy a lot and also Guilty Simpson. You do a lot of good quality music, quality music with other quality MCs of Detroit. How did all of this come about, you connecting with these type people? I mean, really just building relationships. From the Lush. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the Lush and just building relationships period because a lot of a lot of cats that that i have done songs with or work with are older than me you know what i'm saying okay. like they come from the generation that was before me but they always showed me love and respect mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. as far as the fat killers it actually started as a it started as a joke as <laughs> me and me and marv Outside, my man Cobb, you know, rest, in, rest peace, in peace, he told me about this cat named Marv One. He was like, yo, you got to meet this dude. He fat like you. <laughs> he arrogant like you. He yeah, know he cool. So let's connect the day Cobb introduced me to Marv, I told Marv, we need to start a group right. called the Fat Killers. Right. And he okay. was with it. And we, Gordy was already my man, and, and Kyle was like, y'all need to holler at Bango. <laughs> okay, I thought that was and, 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 and I'm going to tell you, Bango, though, like, 
inspired me as a fat dude. Okay. Because <laughs> when I first met Bango, we was at like we was at a club, and this fat dude with one bold leg and this birthmark of Africa on his face <laughs> stepped in the building and was just so arrogant. And I was like, amazing. <laughs> He impressed the shit at you. Well, yeah. That is amazing, man. <laughs> Y'all mentioned the Lush and I let uh, people look, know a little bit more about the Lush and what, how y'all came about to get to know about each other. Well, the Lush was like, it was an open mic. Um, it was a bar in Hamtramck. Mm -hmm. uh, they had an open mic every Wednesday night. You know what I'm saying? I think one of the first cats to start going to the Lush was my man Cuddy Mac. And he used to tell everybody about this spot, but you know, people wasn't biting yet. <laughs> so I guess, I don't know who was the person that actually went and said, yo, this is the place we need to be. But I know my man Kyle on Wednesday was like, man, we gotta go check out this spot called The Lush. Went to The Lush, man. And I guess everybody got the call the same day. Cause everybody Cause was there. everybody <laughs> was there, man. Yes. And like, <laughs> It was dope to me because it put me in a whole realm of dope MCs. Okay. And you know what I'm saying? They were like on each other. Everybody embraced because it was different styles. So everybody embraced each other. Nobody well, cats them. hate it. They hated the wet cats. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, right like I'll say that. Cats was the cats who were the, the dope cats or, or it. They knew they were dope, you know what I'm saying? But they were able to put that aside and mess with the other dope cats. Okay. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's an excellent. What's the thing with you and Bacon? Man, Bacon has always brought me comfort. Well, on couch life. Wait, wait, wait. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to know what would you do for some bacon? <laughs> I mean, if you're asking me that question, I'm asking you what then we need to bust and bake it. We gonna have to turn the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> couch lock. Here, you can present what you would like to present to you. You get you some bacon so, sandwiches. Uh, you don't smoke. You don't we smoke. Don't know about so the we don't about the drink. We can't ask you what so strand. We can't ask you what strand you like. We know you like bacon. What strand of bacon is this? <laughs> that is uh, the shoulder. Detroit pork. Oh no, what do you mean? Look at see, I'm gonna have to educate you on bacon strand. <laughs> you got to. Well, you know know is, it, is, it, is it Thorn Apple Valley? Oh my bad. No, that's uh Coney Island's best. <laughs> oh, so it's Costco bacon. Yeah. Coney Island's best. That's what Coney Island you look I'm educated on all this. I know where it come from. You know what I'm saying? Who but listen. is a kind of sue on bacon? He's about to start a group on Facebook called Bacon Lovers. Listen, let you me probably tell you. gonna have over a million friends eating that bullshit. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever disrespect bacon like Man, that. Now bacon. the bullshit is the vegetables with it, but it's it's cool sometimes. <laughs> oh my god, damn. he you loaded your ass with that Costco yeah. shit. That's it? some sexual <laughs> we do. We like to make Man. sure everybody enjoy their time here on Costco. Lock. So you gotta have what you like. So we should have got you some water, cause how you gonna flush all that bullshit down and then talk to us? I don't want that shit to flush down. I want that shit to stay present. Well, yeah. anyway, I don't even want a napkin. We doing this interview with mayo on the face, <laughs> crumbs in the beard. See, that's how you get comfortable. <laughs> so listen, I want to ask you about fatherhood, cause I listened to that whole album. And it was pretty much, it was like you kind of switched modes, kind of did the flip thing, you know what I'm saying? You still kept your your way of how you flow, but you know, you you put the fatherhood in it and he was very vehement about it. It's a, it's a great album. If you don't have it, it's called Fatherhood. It's his last album, Inspire, especially people who actually love their kids and they perpetrate the fraud. Indeed. Anyway. Well, this bank is great. <laughs> um, it's always important to me to stay true to me. Right. No matter what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? No matter what type of music I'm making, I have to remain true to me. Because at the end of the day, one day, I'm going to be no more. And the only thing that I'm going to have left here is my children. Mm -hmm. And if my children can't go back and, and, and get a sense of me from my art and what I created, then 
what I you fell. Doing for? What did I do? You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's kind of like with with the gift of music. Like God gave you a chance to stay here forever. You know what I'm saying? And you have to make it worthy of people wanting to acknowledge it forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Martin Luther King never going to die. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tupac never going to die. Right. Even if it's just, even if people just say, okay, Dear Mama was my favorite song and the only song I like. That song is going to live forever. There's 10-year-old kids that know who Tupac is, Absolutely. and he's been dead for over 20 years. So when I made Fatherhood, it's kind of it's like the cover. I'm sitting there with my kids, you know what I'm saying? But if you pay attention to the cover, like, I'm sitting back looking over them, like, like he the watching them, exactly. like, you know what I'm saying? So... It kind of left the it, it kind of leave the the door open for I gotta do everything that I have to do to make sure that this vision right here stays pleasant. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And to piggyback off that, I notice a lot of your album things have something to do with father and the titles. How did that come about? The whole father thing. Well, man, father thing. Fat father actually then stem from. Um, Anything to do with children at first, actually. It was kind of like, it started in high school, man. Like, I was so cool. You know what I'm saying? So amazingly cool. <laughs> that just the way I walked, the way I talked, you know what I'm saying? Like, people was feeling me. I feel that. So I felt like I fathered a whole new genre of fat. Right. Like, it wasn't the average fat, F-A-T fat. It wasn't the pretty hot and tempting fat. It was like the, just the new fat with another T. And I was trying to figure out, like, how do I categorize this fat? And I was like, damn, I'm not going to overthink it. Just put another T on it. <laughs> and I, I became the father of the fat with two T's. Okay, okay. So you own that. Right, and that that's why like the first solo mixtape I ever dropped was called Tales of the Childless Father. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it was just because I had to let people know that, hey, I'm an MC and the father of fat with two T's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like everything after that, like I dropped a mixtape after that called Father's Day when my daughter was first born. And it was just me and her on the cover. You know what I'm saying? So... Everything I do, you see my growth. Okay. And it, it's, it's a storyline that I'm leaving behind. You know what I'm saying? And, and people may not get it today. They may not get it tomorrow. They may not get it until I'm gone. So be it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of my storyline. That's all that matters to me. Okay, okay. Getting into some of this new music. Right. Okay, I'm going to bite this bacon real quick. This Veterans Day thing. I don't know if y'all might have heard it yet or up on it yet, but... I've been going to hear little pieces of it, and it's fire. So, how did you come about with the name, first of all, for the CD? Oh, man, y'all got me bacon. Man, <laughs> I'm talking. Dude, beautiful. <laughs> this is a nice moment. Hey, I, don't really want, I don't ever want to forget this. Hey, don't worry, it'll be catching It's just that feeling like, you know, you woke up on Christmas morning. And all them goddamn toys. And you just didn't want it to go away, but you wanted to enjoy the toy. Okay, so this. My man Drugs Beats, producer, did every, every beat on that album. Uh, he's from Atlanta, but he stayed in North Carolina. Dope cat, you know what I'm saying? We had did a couple tracks together, and he was like, yo, oh, you better get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, he was like, yo, man, let's do an album, man. And I was like, you know what? That would be dope. So he started sending me beats or whatever. We started putting it together. We didn't have a, we didn't really have a plan. You know what I'm saying? We just kind of kept working and recording. So as it was coming together, I was calling drugs. I'm like, yo. We need to call this Veterans Day, man. Right. Because, like, I wasn't intentionally doing this, but everything that was coming out was just showing growth and life. Well, you know I what I'm saying? You, I consider you a vet. 
You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of years in the game. So, a lot of years. Yeah. You know, and you kept it consistent. You yeah, know? but it kind of represents a veteran of life, though. Right. Because everybody has a story. Like, you can you can walk up to a, you know, I mentor kids, um, foster kids. Yes, and, and, and 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 the and the dope part is like when you listening to these stories, you got ten year old kids right. who done lived with twelve different families, who done been through uh physical abuse, mental abuse, you know what I'm saying? They are veterans of life, they're still standing, right. and these kids can sit here and tell you their story. So Veterans Day is kinda like me telling my story right. along with stories that other people can relate to because real life you know people everything, see me and they they like he's the funny the funny rap guy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but people don't see that like being 10 11 years old in a shelter with my mom and my brothers mm -hmm. people don't see the my old dude telling me he coming to pick me up and me sitting, me sitting in the window till two in the morning, and my mama saying, "Hey, go to bed. He's not coming." Or, or you know what I'm saying? Not, not having no uh, gas in the house and and warming up water on a hot plate. Like we can laugh and joke all day as adults, but as a child, that shit sticks with you. That shit is writing a story inside of you. You know what I'm saying? So. When I was putting together Veterans Day on the lyrical side, all of that was coming out. Like on on the song Shabazz's Gospel, like That's the the second verse, I had to take myself back to the waiting room of the hospital when my brother was in there dying with a bullet in his head. See, I had one to ask you know what the actual story. I actually had wrote that down because yeah. it, it came out. I, I, could, know, I visually seen the whole thing, you know. Word. And like you say, when your mellow got shot in the, you know, there's a lot of loss in that song. Yeah. You know, so. Well, the second verse is about my brother. My brother got shot, my little brother. And then the third verse is about my man, Kyle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because me and Kyle, we, Kyle was such a good guy. Nobody falls out with Kyle. No, no but Kyle don't have a problem no. with nobody. We all had no enemies. But one time, me and Kyle got into it over some some business stuff, and we didn't even really get into it. There was no argument. There was just a, okay, I'm not talking to you for a month. But in that song, I was just recalling how we wasted that month. You know what yeah, I'm saying? With each other. Like like you waste so much time. And, and then a lot of times people take it for granted because they'll beef out for a year and then come together and say, man, it wasn't even worth it. Yeah. Like it wasn't worth it after the first day. Right. So I'm, I'm just learning. That's one thing that I learned that you can't take that time for granted because you can pay me back money. You can pay me back whatever, but you can't pay me back time. Right. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. For sure. So uh, basically what... Tell us what you think about the album. What what songs do you should you tell the people that they should really listen out for on that album? Because uh, I think unthinkable is the mothers. That's that's a cold track and Shabazz's uh, Shabazz's gospel. That's like that's so deep that everybody once they get the hit on it, it's gonna be one of them songs that's gonna be catchy enough to get them. You know, and it got some meaning to it. So what do you like off the album? What do you think is your most hurtful, like she said? Uh, I got a song called Keep Your Head Up. Uh, that's that's one of my favorites. Um, man, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard to pick because, like, when you, when you create a song, they're like your children. Yeah. It's like you love them all in different ways, but it's equal. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's hard to point out because in each song, I was in a different phase of my life in my mind while writing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I actually got a song called Mama's Words, and my mama couldn't get the rhythm of what she needed to do. Mm -hmm. So Redbone came to the <laughs> rescue. You know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> It's a dope record because it it basically takes me back to sitting on that porch and watching cats sell crack 
and and and, and hustle and and watching uh, hood stories unfold mm -hmm. and to the time where I grew up and I was actually a part of the story. Right. You know what I'm saying? When I was the one out there hustling, when I was the one out there making stories unfold. You know what I'm saying? So Mama's Words is another one of my favorites, but. I, the yeah, whole album, you gotta get the whole, the whole album. album. Well, yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, you have the platform. Is it anything that you would like, like any good advice that you would give up and coming artists? Um, anything you would like to say? Shout outs? Whatever you want to do. You know what I'm well, saying? I, must, I want to say this to the young cats. I do want to say this. You have to do you. If you feel good doing you, don't let nobody stop you from doing you. With that being said, yeah, there's a lot of bullshit out here. A lot of BS music being made, but there's also some dope music. And I think people focus on the bullshit music too much. And, and especially the old cats, they always let these kids do them. It's not for us. When we was listening to N.W.A., Snoop, Dre, all of that, our parents went time to try to hear that shit. They wanted to listen to <laughs> Cut the that Temptations shit and Cut that shit up. Anita Baker. So you got to be real. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand, like, a lot of the stuff we complain about, we gave them. Flat out. We will say that these cats not lyrical over here, or and not even not even speaking on lyrics. We would say, hey, all of these kids out here uh, on, on all this dope and they doing this is causing them to do that. Come on, we was out here singing, sipping on some scissor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was out here. Yeah. We was out here doing the uh, purple pills, like yeah. our generation. They were looking at us party. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's they were watching. Rap they rap. were watching us party. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then from our generation, you also had bullshit music coming out. You know what I'm saying? You had some bullshit music. So I'm just saying, it's easy to tear some shit down. Because Building I'm some shit up, up though. Exactly. Like if you feel like that cat should be saying more, and you have opportunity to reach out to him or kick it with him, why not? Don't disregard him as a person because you don't fuck with what he's doing now. You know what I'm saying? Because when I started, I wasn't talking about shit but guns, shooting any and everybody that I could. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, not to cut you off, what young artists in the city, if you had the chance to work with, that you haven't worked with, would you work with? Oh man, that's a lot of young cats I actually mess with out here. Like, I mean, I work with them. It's my man, but Nolan the Ninja is one cat. Yeah. Who is straight? He he's hungry. He's hungry. He has an old soul too. Like oh, Nolan, yeah. Nolan like twenty two, going on forty five. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But. Uh, even even me being an MC, like or, or you know, quote unquote MC, I mess with a lot of the cats who would be considered like street rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually like Doughboy Cash Out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's well, it's a lot of cats. I, I put it to you like this: it's a lot of cats or a few MC cats who I know who would disagree and say. Oh, uh, well, you know, that ain't our cup of tea. Well, you're right. It's not our cup of tea. So when I listen to it, I understand that they're younger than me. Right. What really they're right. talking about is 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 real. Is their reality. And what they... What they it's not my reality. Right. Now, what I can appreciate is the way that they form their art and, and see little things like, like, like designer. Oh my God, he's he's off the rocker. When I watch a designer video, am I watching it to hear lyrical content? No, I'm not. 
I'm not I'm not listening to a designer song like I'm listening to a Nas song. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But I am absolutely amazed. One, I'm fat as hell. That this dude can jump around on this stage <laughs> and wow. holler for an hour and certain movements that he's doing is actually <laughs> interesting to me. Right. So I gotta look at the art of this shit. Right. Like even if you feel his bullshit is his craft and we're sitting here talking about it right now. Right. So And giving him airtime. Yeah. If, so if he can do that and not rob people, not sell dope, not be in prison, I'm all for it. So my advice, I mean, to answer your question to all these young cats is just keep doing you, man. If 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 it works for you, if you can buy your mama a house or feed your kids, do you. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's bullshit and I don't like it, I just won't buy it. Absolutely. But, but, do you have any up and coming events coming up that you would like people to know about? Uh, just the album dropping November 11th. November yeah, 11th. Y'all heard yeah. it, man. November is day. And he let your girl Redbone get on there too. Go get that shit. Make sure y'all go check it out. It's hot. It's Cop Slot. It's been real. I'm Ill Will. Redbone. And this Fat Father. And this is Bay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Peace. Searching for boss roles to shoot it out. Hard cold, traveling dark roads to move about. Homicide guys in the yellow tape, spool it out. Mama's tears falling on cotton blends and huge amounts. Lick on the ground, ain't accidental, they pour it out. Packing nickels to purchase a sack of vittles. At nine, I was two hand touch with artificial. Uh -huh. Now they nine, trying to fuck, get high and pack a pistol. It's never coincidental when sons of dope dealers become the dope dealer. You taught them the rope, read the story you wrote, nigga. The picture is way bigger than us. They dying young, growing up in the rush. Buying guns like it's gonna be enough to see another day. While I just sat on that porch and heard my mother say, Don't take your ass up that goddamn street. I done told you before, you hang with nine losers. Guess who gonna be the tenth one? All these little niggas around here killing this shit. And you wanna go up the street and hang with them? If it's gonna be some killing, it's gonna be by my motherfucking hands. Now try me, little niggas. You don't need to be hanging around with these old pissy tail little boys right here. Don't wanna make nothing of their life. If you got a problem, you need to start paying some bills in here. Get your ass in the house. Drug distribution and prostitution was common when niggas was playing Nottis and Dre put out the chronic. I made mama a promise, but straight from being honest, refrain from being conscious in exchange for profit. Maintain the logic that broke wasn't an option. Focus, open bottle returns wasn't an option. All the years I spent on the porch, I set up watching while niggas met up and plotted to keep something in pocket. Acknowledge that me in college never would be a topic. My comrades was copping and seeing they money rocket my neighborhood was tropic hotter than the bahamas 14 smoking ganja prodigy of the project t money introduced me to grabbing a mic and rocking that's when my focus shifted to music instead of nonsense look what i accomplished since then i found another way and don't regret all the times i heard my mother say you keep asking me why i'm fussing because you think you're gonna do what the hell you want to do you not grown you living in this house with me i didn't think your age you ain't been my age i told you not to take your ass up the street Around the block, up the corner, I don't give a shit Just don't nobody pay bills in this house but me Yeah, like I said, I work every day To make sure you got a roof over your head Clothes on your back and food in your mouth You hear me? Get your ass in the house Yeah, we got to live over in this neighborhood And if we got to live over here, you gon' do what the hell I say Sit on the porch, you don't need to be hanging around With these old pissy tail little boys around here Don't wanna make nothing of their life Hey, mamas ain't showing them shit, daddies ain't around You got somebody in your life, that's why you gon' sit your ass on this porch if you got a problem with that, you need to start paying some motherfucking bills. Cause don't nobody pay bills in this house but me.
Get your ass in the house. In the house.